Hey. Sandman Volume 3 The Dream Country This compiles uh, Sandman issues 17 to 20, so it's um, four issues, each of one a, a self-contained story. And um, each of these stories is okay, it's a good story by itself, but all in all, this felt to me like a very disappointing volume. Um, essentially because they are very generic stories. Um, I, I can imagine that, that every writer um, holds a collection of stories uh, to be told in his drawer or in his uh, notebook or even only on his mind. And this is a volume in which I feel Neil Gaiman kind of dumps some of those stories. And um, it is not... None of them is brilliant, per se, and it is not what I am expecting of this series. I am, I now feel, after reading the first 20 issues, that nothing really surprised me, and the most interesting thing seems to be the um, mythology which could be constructed around um, the Endless and Morpheus character itself and so far it hadn't happened. The first story, Calliope, with art by Kelly Jones, is um, about a young author who uh, made a very successful first novel, but he's now suffering from writer's block. And he acquires a muse, um, a muse in the true sense of the word, a classic uh, Greek muse from an old author. Um, and in, pe by possessing her, um, he becomes again a very, um, a very accomplished author. But Calliope, the muse, um, was before, in ancient times, a lover uh, of Morpheus himself. And um, knowing of her condition, Morpheus condemns this uh, author to unlimited creativity driving him mad and basically that's that's the story that's the the premise of this first issue of, of issue 17 of the first of this volume and this feels so generic to me um for a educated uh, author like neil gaiman is Relying on the classic myths, on muses kind of stories, seems a very easy and safe uh, place to go. And um, this would be a, a very nice story in any anthology uh, with... Um, almost any kind of theme behind or it could fit almost any character and that's that's the problem with all the issues collected in this volume it is all very generic um, these are not exactly sandman stories it feels more like it is stories in the mind of, of neil gaiman which could be adapted to any character to any kind of series with just a few tweaks. And the same thing happens with the second story, 
also with art by Kelly Jones. It's a dream of a thousand cats. Um, and this is a cute story, uh, but um, stories about cats are, are not that unusual on comics and I, I can't really see anything special about this one. Um, again, I feel um, the mythology behind Morpheus, Sandman and the Endless is what um, I'm expecting to be most the most interesting about uh, this series. And so far, after 20 issues, Neil Gaiman hasn't been able to provide um, that, that kind of of narrative and then um, he seems to um, be um, he seems to repeat um, story structures very often um, in Calliope the first story of this volume it, it's uh, I'm sorry in um, dream of a thousand cats on this story it, it is also a narrative inside the narrative, just like it happened in issue nine, uh, where the, the story of Maida is told. Um, it's also a storyteller um, preaching to, to his audience, uh, telling his story to his audience. And um, if the first volume is a quest for Sandman's artifacts, the second volume shows, basically shows us the quest, uh, Rose's quest for her young brother. So, um, structure kind of repeats itself too often. Uh, and um, that's a bit disappointing to me. Then we have a very celebrated and a award-winning story, a Midsummer's Night's Dream, um, which I really can't make um, very good comments about because it is basically about the the Shakespeare play, and um, I'm not uh, versed on the works of. William Shakespeare. Uh, we, I never studied any of Shakespeare's uh, work before. And is this still recording? Yeah. I've never studied William Shakespeare's works before. Um, all I know about A Midsummer's Night's Dream is what I gathered through um, either comics or especially movies. Uh, but I suppose, I'm sure this was written with an English language um, uh, reader in mind. And uh, I believe the works of William Shakespeare are studied um, as soon as high school in, in the US and, and in, in the UK. But it's obviously not the case in Portugal. And the way the, the story is told um, is very difficult to follow for someone who, who is not educated uh, on, on Midsummer's Night's Dream uh, previously. So I can't really have an opinion about, about how good um, Gaiman's writing is or not, but I like the premise. I like the idea uh, of um, patronizing Shakespeare <clears throat> in a way that the the fairies, the world of fairies, would not be forgotten by humans. That's that's okay, but um, again, it is um, hard to follow, and I don't think. Charlie Vess does a, 
a brilliant work in terms of graphic narrative. It is somewhat difficult, um, at least for me, to follow uh, the, the uh, changes between what's going on on stage or on the audience or backstage. And then we have um, facade, uh, the fourth issue collected here, with art by Colleen Doran. And um, I really, really enjoyed the first five or six pages of facade um, because they portray a very lonely woman and um, this kind of touched me personally, not uh, uh, directly uh, concerning me, but someone I know. And those first five or six pages about loneliness were really powerful. Um, but all in all, it is also a, a story about loneliness which could be adapted to almost any any character, any series. And after finishing this third volume, I kind of became afraid of not being able to um, interpret it or to make a, a good analysis of what's going on with Sandman. Um, there's so much praising of this series and I'm feeling so disappointed at this point that I went looking for um, information from other people, for opinions from other people. And on YouTube I found the videos from P.T. Hilton, I think that's, that's his name, um, and his channel. And I watched this first. He's doing very much, or in the past he has done very much the same I'm doing now. He went through um, the entire Sandman series, volume by volume. Although I think, um, in his case, it was not a first read, but a reread. Uh, but I enjoyed his videos very much. And I also went looking further in the internet about uh, comics, um, sites or blogs who were um, going through Sandman the way I am. And I found this site where three guys or two guys and one girl, and um, I think the girl it's it's the first time she's reading Sandman, uh, and they are going um, deeply into the, the series and what it means and analyzing uh, issue by issue. But I, I can't really understand uh, the, the level of depth uh, they are willing to go with this. Um, and to give you an example, I read one of them saying that about this volume and about the preface of this volume by Neil Gaiman itself, Neil seemed to suggest that he was taking a break or somewhat of a break because he was getting tired of uh, planning the, the main storyline with, with Sandman. But um, the, the writer of this article didn't believe Neil was being honest because the real meaning of these stories was blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and... Um, they are, I think there is an over analysis uh, of, of Sandman. And after reflecting a bit about it, I think I realized what my problem with the series is. 
Neil Gaiman, no doubt, uh, is able to write in several layers. Uh, most uh, good writers do so. Uh, but the initial layers on this series, at least so far, the main layer or the top layers are just not very good. And when the top layers are not very good, um, everything that comes after, if it is um, very deeply analyzed, um, it just arises uh, a lot of speculation and many more questions than answers. And I believe that's the problem with, with Sandman so far. Uh, but at least, one thing this series, no doubt, has is the ability to provoke that kind of in-depth analysis. Which is also somewhat weird, but I attribute that to the time context in which uh, this was published. I mean, we are talking about the very late 80s and early 90s and the early 80s were a magical period in comics um, just think about um, the x-men by claremont and burn and about frank miller's daredevil and frank miller's uh, batman and so many other good things um lane wines george perez the mutant titans uh, walter simonson's thor um, everything was or almost everything was brilliant in the early 80s um i just like that i cannot think about a marvel title uh, which was not in any way very interesting and then Watchmen came in the mid-80s. And Watchmen was so groundbreaking, I think people um, went in a, in a expectation to um, something as good as Watchmen, or better than Watchmen, to, to appear. And it didn't, or at least it didn't for a very long time. Um, and in the early 80s, we also had um, other Alan Moore's works, Swamp Thing and V from Vendetta and uh, things like that. So in the late 80s and early 90s, people are getting somewhat disappointed with comics. Uh, we are watching at the rise of Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee and um, the uh, Marvel is no longer Marvel but becomes almost ex-Marvel uh, with uh, all the ex-titles and Cable being a very important character uh, and I could never stand Cable I never understood what appeal what the appeal of Cable was but getting back to Watchmen, and this is not to, to ridicule in any way Sandman to Watchmen. I still expect Sandman to um, meet my high expectations about it, uh, although I'm already at issue 20 and so far it didn't, but I'm still keeping that hope. But just comparing it to to Watchmen for the sake of it, and at least, and considering that I'm still in a, um, not even one third on the way through the entire Sandman series, but just for the sake of it. The thing with Watchmen is that the more you read it, the more you analyze it, the more you appreciate it, but you never enter in a contradiction 
with your previous thoughts or analysis. The deeper you go on the several layers in Watchmen, it's the deeper you understand it. But because the top layers are so good and so well made, you just go in in a more a brand in a more uh, wide uh, kind of knowledge and not necessarily contradicting what you thought before. And if you discuss Watchmen with, with other people, there is also not that much room to, to uh, opposing lines of thought, because the top layers are so interesting and so strong and so well done. And what happens in Sandman is that um, because the top layers are not that good, um, the more you dive into it, the more you find hypotheses, 